Happy Tank Tuesday, folks. I swear that my wife, Liz, has a way with fish. Not only is she good at fishing, but our pet bluegill, Sheriff, is actually letting her pet him. <laughs> and it's actually kind of like he likes it. It's pretty wild. All right, everyone, in case you're new to this channel, these are our pet fish. We have a 300 gallon aquarium with two pet bass named Bonnie and Clyde. And we have a pet bluegill named Sheriff right here. And about a month and a half ago, we did a video where we put artificial lures in the tank and we watched how these fish reacted to those lures. And you guys really enjoyed it, so we're gonna do it again. This is part two of that video. And in that last video, you all left us comments on the types of lures that you would like to see us use in this video. So we're gonna go strictly off of the recommendations from the last video. And what you can probably see here is this is how we have it set up. So we have one small issue in the fact that our tank isn't just a wide open surface. So we take the line and we go up under here, up under here, and up under here. And you can see back there we have a GoPro set up and we also got the first lure. But we're gonna attach a GoPro here so we can kind of get an underwater shot of it. But one of the most popular comments in the last video was you should use the lures that you caught Bonnie and Clyde on. So we actually caught these two pet bass out in the Mobile Delta. And if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link down in the description. And it's a pretty cool story. We actually caught Bonnie and Clyde off the same cypress tree at the exact same time. So you can watch that video. Liz caught Bonnie off of a June bug worm and I caught Clyde off of that square bill crankbait right there. So we're gonna test and we actually used the June bug worm in the last video, so we're not gonna do that, but we are gonna put that square bill in here first. All right, and the last thing we're gonna talk about here is in the last video, you guys said that we should feed them before we test them with these artificial lures. So we're actually gonna drop several minnows in here, let them eat, not get too full, but we're gonna let them eat pretty good. And then we're gonna wait about 30 minutes and then we're gonna start testing out with the artificial lures. All right, so we got the square bill all set. We got the GoPro in the water to hopefully get you an underwater shot. We got Liz here that's gonna help me out. As you guys have already seen earlier that she has some kind of special talent with these fish. They love her, she can catch them, she can pet them. I can't even put my hand in there anywhere near Sheriff, but for some reason, the fish love Liz. So she's gonna pull that little piece of fluorocarbon line and we are gonna see if these fish want anything to do with a square bill crankbait. All right, Liz, let's go. All right, we had one strike from Bonnie. Nothing too aggressive, but we did get one little attempt at it. I don't think Clyde wanted anything to do with that lure. <laughs> he can kind of remember that from the past. He's hanging out over here on the other side of the aquarium. All right, next up is the Magnum Lizard with a dyed chartreuse tail. Liz, go ahead and pull that in. Let's see how they react to it. All right, and next up is gonna be a Pepper Custom Double Willow Leaf Spinnerbait. All right, Liz, go ahead and pull that. Ooh, there we go. All right, I feel like they're kinda of catching on to what we're doing here, dropping artificial lures in the tank, so we're gonna stop for today, and we're gonna come back tomorrow and drop a few more lures in and see how they react then. All right, we're back here the next day. We just fed the fish a little bit. Got Liz here with me. We're gonna start off with something that Sheriff the Bluegill could possibly eat, and we're gonna go with a tiny crawfish lure. It's a little diving bait. We're gonna see if Sheriff can partake in this little contest. All right, let's see if they want it. Bonnie wanted it. I'm a little bit interested. 
but I don't know that Sheriff ever even saw it. All right, let's move on to the next bait. So far, we've only had bass strikes. All right, so you know I can't do one of these videos without doing some top water. So the next bait is a river to sea whopper plopper in the bluegill color. Let's see if they're interested in blow ups. Hmm, possibly. Oh. There's definitely some interest in that. Let's do it one more time. All right, so we're going to put them in a real live environment feeding situation. What we're going to do, we set our whopper plopper up on the other side of the tank this time, and we're going to drop a couple minnows in to get them feeding and then see if they can be tricked by an artificial bait coming over the surface. I think that that's all it's going to take to get them committed. So, Liz, let's go ahead and drop some minnows in and then go with the top water. <laughs> that's all it took with a real live that right there is why you want to throw that whopper plopper oh look at the boogie he even had to come up and get it see once they all got committed to eating that's all it took that's why you want to throw that whopper plopper around schooling bait fish because once they see the actual thing that's all they need to know that it's enough to get them to, to go commit to it and bite it we got that was a trifecta all three of the fish hit the whopper plopper and are still interested in it. They just can't quite make out what it is. I think Bonnie's about to blow it out of the tank here in just a second. But that was a really good test. The first time they were interested, yeah, she's caught on. They're definitely interested, but they've caught on to it. But that was an extremely impressive test right there. They were interested at first, but then you drop some live bait in the area and that's all it took. All right, we're gonna take a quick break from artificial lures and we're gonna give them some worms. That's Sheriff's favorite. All right, and something else you all requested in the last video is to let's see if scent plays a role in what they will eat and what they won't eat. So what I've got here is we're going to take one swim bait jig head, we're going to put a Kitek trailer on it, a four inch trailer, and we're going to dip it in the garlic scent, which is also going to add a chartreuse dye to the tail, and then the other one we're going to do plain, and we're going to drop them down in the tank at the same time. And I'm going to actually super glue the swim baits onto here because whenever I cut the hooks off it makes it a lot easier for those fish to pull it right off so I don't want them swallowing a bunch of plastic so I'm going to super glue the swim bait on and then we'll dye one tail and drop them in. All right, so there's our final result. We got the spiked garlic on the bottom one and plain on the top. Let's see if it entices the bite. All right, guys, now we're going to test the chartreuse versus the plain. Three. Bluegill's definitely attacking the one with the chartreuse. I got chartreuse on the left. They're definitely eating that one. Ooh. All right, so have you gotten a hit on yours yet, okay, Liz? Uh it was All right, that so Bonnie had it as soon as it, it didn't even hit okay, the so ground. Before. She, Liz has one hit, and I've got two. I'm not sure if that last clip was enough to determine if the chartreuse makes them like it, but you can tell even with Liz holding it on the outside of the tank, Bonnie's still interested in it. But we did get one more strike on it, but it wasn't a conclusive test in my opinion. And be sure to leave a comment down below to let us know what type of lures you would like to see us test out in this tank next time. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Now we're going to roll through some of the feeding clips from this past week. 
<laughs> as Bonnie's still trying to get that. And we're going to answer the most popular questions from the last Tank Tuesday video. All right, just got done with the feeding. You know, Larry's out. Oh, there's another minnow down there. Bonnie just shot down there and got one. Spitting up rocks. And there's a minnow hanging out with Larry down there. If he only knew, Larry will get him just as quick as he shot, he kicked him out. Bonnie ended up getting it. Oh, there it was. Clyde got it. <laughs> that was pretty wild. Larry, sorry buddy, you just missed out. If you'd only turned around, he was down there. All right, first question comes from Catch em All Fishing. Can we have a pet bass battle? Guys, if you hadn't seen Catch em All Fishing, he's another YouTuber. He has a pet bass just like ours, except his bass is much bigger. But catch them all, we'll be happy to do any kind of pet bass battle as long as it doesn't include your bass eating ours. But when it comes to savage little bass, we've got some small savages in this tank. So you just let me know what kind of battle you'd like to have and we'll see if we can make it work. Next question comes from Dominic Lord. Do you guys leave the fish tank light on at night? No, we have it set up on a timer to where it runs anywhere from 8 to 10 hours a day. Next question comes from the professor. Have you ever thought about making a pond in your backyard for all your fish? Yes, that's something Liz and I definitely have as a goal of ours. We want to build our own lake and that may be Bonnie and Clyde's retirement plan. Next question comes from Rabbit Creek Outdoors. Hey Bama Bass, how much do Bonnie and Clyde weigh? When we caught them, we caught them out of the Mobile Delta and they were roughly, I'd say, 12 ounces. And that was almost a year ago. And so if I had to guess, they've probably gained, not a full pound, but I'd say they're probably close to a pound and a half each right now. All right, and last question comes from Jason Kirkland. Have you guys decided which moss you were going to put on the bonsai tree? So we're pretty happy with the Miramo moss. We're actually going to redo it in the next Tank Tuesday video. We're going to pull it out. We're going to put Miramo moss and Java moss on it. And we weren't too impressed with the Christmas moss, so we're going to take it out and just go with the Miramo and Java. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this Tank Tuesday. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can enjoy these fish with us because we put out content every Tuesday. Hope you all enjoyed it, and we'll see you all next week. Children.